center, or at least more than slightly. I think the important thing is the America, the entire United States, rejected California politics, including uh, Kamala Harris. But California, with rejecting Prop 36 and the other initiatives they were able to vote on, made it clear they want to return to law and order. Every single county in California passed a tough, uh, tougher on crime initiative over the objections of our governor. So he's the one that's out of step with everyone, including some of the liberals in San Francisco, who no longer want to have feces in the street and criminals taking things out of the stores so they can't even access them. Congressman, we also think about sort of how this plays out in Washington. I'm born and raised in the 209. My parents right now are living through that uh, 13th district, hotly contest uh, contested, uh, closely watched race right now between Duarte and Gray. How um, sort of close are you looking at this in terms of what's indicative of sort of a House of Representatives, of sort of how you're able to get things done with a hopeful maybe majority? Well, as you know, that was a pickup for us uh, with Duarte, and it looks like we're going to hold it. Uh, as a matter of fact, we have three di three that have not been called that are, have Republicans, but we also have three that are held uh, historically as Democrats that we are within 2,000 votes of, uh, including the uh, the Stockton area and including Jim Costa's seat in the Inland Valley. Uh, uh, basically, these are areas that have been Democrat strongholds, and we're within that fraction of a percentage of taking two more. So the voter shift was significant in a deep blue state. Uh, let's not kid ourselves, uh, we are a deep blue state. But the shift is significant, and I think people like our governor who decide that they're going to push against the Donald Trump, who in fact was big part of the reason. When he came to Coachella Valley late in the election and he campaigned in California, he did so because he wants to represent everyone and because his message resonated even in California. And the governor does uh, objects to it at his own uh, peril. Mm. Congressman, uh, President, uh, President elect Trump has said that the border is going to be an issue for him day one. And he's also said um, essentially that he's got no choice but to conduct mass deportations. Give me a little bit of a sense of how that looks. We've got at least 12 mil million people that we know about in this country illegally. How do you actually deport those people? Well, that's a good question. Uh, first of all, the, the president has proven that he, when he makes a promise, he keeps it, and that was a clear promise. Uh, the number is probably 24 million, because we always said we had 12 million before they knowingly let 12 million more in. Uh, of that, four, five million of them are criminals. And I'm talking about felonies. I'm talking about serious crimes. The president has made it clear that his priority for this mass deportation will start with criminals. It'll also include people who have been adjudicated and, and told to leave that didn't leave. That alone is about five million people. And if you look at that, that's more than twice what White Eisenhower did uh, generations ago. So yes, it's going to be a mass deportation. Are we going to get rid of 12 million people overnight? Of course not. It's going to take a while. But getting rid of the people who are uh, victimizing the very communities yeah. uh, with legal immigrants, boy, I'll tell you, that's going to be a winner for the president and a winner for California. Yeah, yeah we'll be watching it and we'll be leaning on you for expertise as it unfolds. Congressman Daryl Isaac, good to see you. Thank you.